Hi folks, and welcome to our second episode about the book of Hebrews. We're going to be talking today on the topic of angels. In addition to our pastor, Andrew, we're going to have a special guest speaker. Pastor Lindy Apon is the pastor at Parkway Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, he's joining us this morning to discuss the topic of angels. I think you're going to enjoy it, so sit back and relax as we talk more about the book of Hebrews. Well, Lindy, thanks for joining me today as we um, talk about a, a very um, important and I think an interesting topic. You know, in Hebrews chapter 1 and chapter 2, uh, we see that Jesus is better than the angels. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to angels, um, people, I think images or uh, things come in people's minds about what they are and what they do. And um, some of those are, are probably accurate pictures, other than others are uh, drastically inaccurate pictures. So let's just talk a little bit today about um, angels and what they are in the Bible. And, and why don't we start with maybe some um, popular images or um, concepts that people have about angels. So let me just, um, I guess, leave with this. When, when we hear the word angels, what do you think most people think of? Um, I think they think of television and movie concepts which are generally inaccurate when you look at scripture like Michael Landon on Touched by an Angel. And then I think people get their concepts again from the movies and they think, oh, you know, I don't know that heaven's gonna be much fun because who wants to sit on a cloud all day and strum a harp? Well, good news. <laughs> that concept is not a biblical concept. Right. Uh, in fact, really the foundation is often when somebody dies and it's someone they know, they'll say, oh, heaven gained another angel today. Totally wrong, yeah. because people don't become angels when we die. Yeah. Whole different deal, according to scripture. And so instead of getting our concepts of angels from television or from movies or from general culture, we much are, we're much better off to say, what does the Bible actually say? Yeah. So what you're telling me is that every time a bell rings, an angel doesn't get his wings? Or I mean, is I, that... I don't think so. Okay. In fact, when you go to heaven, I don't think you will get your wings. Yeah, that doesn't mean you're a bad guy. You know, I don't think you'll get wings. Yeah, well, I know. Um, it's a. There are a lot of perceptions, misperceptions, those type of things. I, I think one important thing to begin any discussion of angels, though, is um, angels do exist. Right. They're, they are real beings. The Bible talks about. In fact, I, I think, um, and I didn't verify this, but I read somewhere that over 300 times in the Bible. Are angels mentioned? That's that's a lot, mm -hmm. and especially um, one of the most popular titles of God in the Bible is is the Lord of Hosts. Mm -hmm. Well, what are the hosts mm -hmm. that He's Lord of? Mm -hmm. It's talking about the angels. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think anytime we have a discussion about angels, we um, do need to recognize that they do exist. They just don't exist in the mm -hmm. way that I think a lot of times mm -hmm. people characterize them mm -hmm. or, or think about them. Would you say that, that is that fair, a fair analysis of that? Or Yep, yep. Uh, again, people have watched a lot of TV, and on TV, angels are presented in a certain way. They have halos. They have lights behind their head. There's nothing in the Bible that says halos. There's nothing in the Bible that says angels have these glowing lights behind their head. But because we've seen it in the movies, a lot of times people have not really read Scripture enough or paid attention enough to understand the difference between what the culture presents and what scripture says. And that's why this is a good topic, because we do care about what the scripture says. Yeah, I think that ten, any tendency about angels, or really any topic, but especially since angels is our topic today, um, I think sometimes people elevate them too much and think too highly of them or, or give them some special power or some magical formula that they're not intended to have. I think another temptation is sometimes people just ignore them. They don't think about angels. They don't realize, uh, even Christians, what the ministry of angels mm -hmm. really is. Mm -hmm. Or um, I think a lot of times we distort the picture. So we know they exist, um, but somehow it's not really there. And I think, you know, if we look about, if we think about television, if we think about art, you know, we think about the chubby babies flying around mm -hmm. or, um, you know, I think about every play that's ever done, you know, we always take usually the, the youngest girls 
you know, to make those the angels. And yeah, they're pretty and they're cute, and that's, that's mm -hmm. the idea. But man, that's a very different picture mm -hmm. from what we see mm -hmm. in the scripture mm -hmm. about angels. Um, you mentioned several kind of misperceptions about angels. Um, and so I kind of want to flesh those out just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, one, one that you mentioned I think is really popular in culture is that when people die, they become angels. Um, biblically, we don't see that in Scripture. No. Like we see something far different. Why don't you talk about that just for a minute, flesh that, that idea out, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Well, we know from Scripture that angels are created beings. Um, we can read about angels like Michael, and we can see examples of his role in Scripture. Um, but if you're, again, if Scripture is our authority, there's not one single example in the Bible that gives anybody any reason to believe that when a person dies, they go to heaven, and then they get their wings, and they get their cloud, and they get their harp, and that concept doesn't exist in Scripture. In fact, a lot of the things we see in the movies, like Cupid, you know, those actually come out of Roman mythology, or angels with halos, that actually comes out of pagan beliefs, you know, ancient pagan beliefs. So it's kind of sad that for us as followers of Jesus, that we're often influenced by things from Roman mythology and paganism, instead of knowing, no, the Bible's the authority. So what does the Bible say? Well, what it doesn't say ever is that when you die, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to become an angel. Actually, that would be a demotion it for would us be. because we, we're it children be. of God. Right. We're sons and daughters of God. Um, the angels are God's, not God's children, are God's right. messengers. Right. And so, um, you know, as we even, um, Hebrews 1 talks about that, and we talked Sunday about we're joint heirs with Christ because mm -hmm. we're here. So, man, I don't want to become an angel yeah. when I die. I want to, I want to be a child right. of, of, of God. Right. Um, I think another misperception that oftentimes people have is they know that angels help people. And whether it's Highway to Heaven or Touched by an Angel or, or those type of things, um, I think sometimes people think, well, if God is going to help me, it's going to be through an angel. Now, obviously, the scripture is clear. God does use angels. In fact, the Bible talks about um, sometimes people entertain angels unaware and we see mm -hmm. um, you know, those things. But I think one thing that's important if we're going to talk about angels, is to realize that angels aren't the normal, typical way that God helps, provides for, protects his his children. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, first of all, I think one of the the primary ways that God encourages us, protects us, equips us is through other believers. He's much more likely to use somebody that we know in our church body or you know a Christian friend to encourage us to help us than he is to send an angel. That's kind of a, a supernatural intervention um, that is, I think, more rare than we typically mm -hmm. think of mm -hmm. in, in those terms. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if you remember when Jesus, after his crucifixion and his resurrection, and he's teaching the disciples and he's filling them in and helping them understand some things they were confused about, um, you know, they all want him to stay, of course. But Jesus says, no, I, I can't stay, because if I stay, the, the Holy Spirit of God won't come. He said, I'm going to send, and I like the word, another helper who's going to indwell you, the Holy Spirit of God. And so as wonderful as angels sound, and again, you're right, angels do exist, and in rare cases, God does seem to have moments where he sends angels as his messengers to do special assignments, sometimes special assignments to support and help us, that's good, but it's not as good as the primary method, which is the Holy Spirit of God, which is not just coming and going and occasionally doing a, a little thing to help us, but, this, but the Bible says that he indwells us. So which is better, the indwelling, permanent Spirit of God, which can encourage us and help us in our grief and our wounds and our hurts and can guide us, well, that's far better than the occasional momentary appearance of an angel. Yeah, yeah I think it's an excellent point. And I think, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is God. Mm -hmm. and, and as you talk about, and the angels are messengers of God. And, mm -hmm. and we're, if God indwells us, man, 
you know, how that's where the power is. That's right. really where it's. I, I think another thing that's important is I think there's this idea. Um, sometimes you'll hear um, pastors, teachers, false pastors, teachers, whatever, trying to to humanly command angels, declaring that angels will do this or you know angels should come here or do that. Well, one thing that we need to be very clear is. Um, on, the angels only answer to one, and that is to the Lord. Um, we as believers don't have any authority to command the angels. We pray to we don't pray to angels or ask them to do things. We pray to the Lord, and He um, sends and, and orders the angels. Um, and I think that's uh, another way that popularly uh, we believers can get misled. All right, um, we've talked about some false ideas, kind of a what angels are, what angels do. Um, let's spend, uh, let's get to the good stuff. Let's talk about the truth. Mm -hmm. What do we see in Scripture about angels? Mm -hmm. What are angels, what do they do, and how do they interact with mm -hmm. believers? Um, yeah, several things we see in Scripture. And, and I keep coming back to this, but it's important. The Scriptures are sole authority. And so if you want to know about angels, what's right, what's not right, what do we see in movies and TV that's correct? Really, almost nothing. So what is correct? Well, the scriptures are where we have to go. So one example of uh, angel angels and their role uh, is Isaiah chapter 6. And it's a great vision of God with Isaiah. And we, we see in this vision that's saying that seraphim, which is a type of angelic being, are, are crying out day and night, holy, holy, holy. So we know there are angels who never cease to um, adore God and worship God. So there is at least one role we see in scripture with seraphim and then cherub or cherubim that worship is one of the things angels do. And even, you know, when we talk about the, the great host that appeared in the sky at the birth of Mary, you know, well, once again, there's a whole lot of praising God going on. So that's one of the roles. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, you look at Revelation, and this, uh, which echoes the scene from Isaiah, that there are um, myriads and myriads and innumerable um, hosts of angels that are praising God. And I think it would be, um, we need to probably mention at this point that um, we know that angels are created beings, but um, the, the demons, well, Satan himself, is a fallen angel right. who failed to worship the Lord, but indeed wanted worship for himself. Right. And, and the demons are um, fallen angels. So there is a, an evil realm of that, but the angels that are in the presence of God are created beings who, who worship the Lord. What else do we see um, in Scripture from that? Servants. We see the word servants used. And, and I know you're in Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews 1, 7 talking about angels, says he makes his angels, and he uses the phrase winds, and he makes his servants flames of fire. Now, I'm going to defer to your pastoral expertise on wind and fire, but I got the servants part, okay? <laughs> so whatever else angels do, we know they are at the beck and call of God in humility to serve God as God. And, you know, if, if God... If God has an assignment for his angels, he merely speaks the word and they obey. They are his servants. Yeah, and um, I think we can, as you know, as children of God, but also those that are called to serve God, as you know, we call him Lord, Master. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are some things applicationally that we can learn um, about, we learn from the angels about what it means to serve God. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, they're immediately obedient. When God says mm -hmm. to do something, they, mm -hmm. because of their trust and their, their love, mm -hmm. they, know, they know the nature of God. They see that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an important lesson for us. And um, two is, you know, when you see, I think there's some stories in Scripture that we see the activity of angels. And it's just an amazing, almost impossible situation. And an angel shows mm -hmm. up and, um, and those sort of things. And I think the, temp the tendency is to say, well, the angel had this power. Mm -hmm. Well, no. Where did the power come from? Mm -hmm. The power is the Lord's. Right. And so the same God that worked through his servant mm -hmm. um, in an angel to do that, that same power is, 
in God, it's available to us as, as his servants. So I think that's um, just some applicational things that we can learn mm -hmm. looking at, at the mm -hmm. news. Um, another thing that comes to mind, and, and, and I'm sure that this is something you'll, you'll, you'll touch on from Hebrews 1, but Hebrews 1.14 uh, says, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Well, that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. So who will inherit salvation? That is those who belong to Jesus. So a part of the role of angels as sent by God, as assigned by God, is to serve those who have a relationship with Jesus as Lord and Savior. Um, and, and as I was glancing through this, one example came to mind that I, I looked up. It's uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 to 17. Let me just read the, these couple of verses because it's a glorious, amazing thing. When you talk about the power, it's not the angel's power, but my goodness, God does some pretty powerful yeah. things through it. They are powerful sometimes. things, aren't they? So here's what it says. It says, Elijah and his servant were once menaced by the king of Syria and had no way to defend themselves. Now when the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was circling the city. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And so he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So who were riding those horses, and who was a part of those chariots of fire? It was angels. Yeah. Now, I don't know that that scenario happens every day, but angels, as the servants of God and as messengers of God, there are times when God chooses to use his angels to serve the people of God for his purposes. Yeah, and, you know, as, as you were reading that, two things st uh, stuck out to me. One is, um, you know, these angels, these, this host was invisible to the, even to Elijah as, as he was looking at this mm -hmm. until God opened his eyes to see what was there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, angelic beings can be active without us seeing what's there. Two is, talks about fear not. You know, it's interesting to me, almost every time that a, an angel appears in scripture, what do they lead with? <laughs> Don't be afraid. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it was a terrifying thing. And mm -hmm. you know, if you're talking about a chubby baby with wings or some kind of, mm -hmm. um, you know, blonde headed, uh, you know, effeminate looking man from art or whatever, those things aren't very right. fearsome. Right. But man, with the, the angels terrified, whether it was the people of God who he was appearing to, or the, the especially the enemies of God when they saw it. And I think, you know, when you get to kind of a general, who are angels? Well, angels are an army. Yeah. You know, they may sing at times and worship, <laughs> but I don't think they're just yeah. singer boys. Yeah, there you go. I think they're, they're an army of God, empowered by God, with various roles, one of which is worship. Uh, and that ought to say something really good to all the choir guys. It's like you can be tough and powerful and worship. Yeah. So that's for your that's for your music ministry. There you go. Yeah. Right yeah. There. Um, now, I, I just want to touch on something briefly. We don't have a lot of time to get into it, but um, you know, we talked about the idea of angels protecting, and I think one of the times um, you see it popularly is this idea of guardian angels. You know that somehow every person has an angel assigned to them. And, um, you know, one, one thing I think we need to be clear about is we don't see that in Scripture. There's a couple of references from which people have inferred that, but there's no mention of guardian angels in Scripture. Now, having said that, we do know that one of the ministries of angels for God's people is that they do protect, they do empower, that God does send them to intervene, often in times of crisis. Um, or often in, in difficult times. That's one of the ways that God works supernaturally in his power in the life of believers. Um, so I think a misconception or a way we can get distracted is what happens when, if God uses angels to protect us and to, to make 
um, sure that bad things don't happen. What happens when bad things do happen to believers? Does that mean our, I mean, was our angel off duty? Was, you know, were they busy with other things? What, what should we think about in terms of the ministry of angels and the reality that in a broken world, there are painful crises, there are disasters, there are um, this, these bad things that happen as God's people. You have thoughts or about that? I think you're correct. I mean, there's not a, a clear verse, example, or passage of scripture that says, if you're a follower of Jesus, you automatically have an angel assigned to you. That angel protects you from all harm. But we know from life that's simply not true. Christians have problems. Christians are in car accidents. Christians get diseases. Christians die. But it's interesting to me that often God will take the hardest, most horrible, painful situations in our lives and are not those the things that God most often uses to help us learn to depend on him, to give us a motivation to cry out to him and to pray? And does God not often use those painful things things in our lives to help us become more and more the image of Christ. And so if God gave us a guardian angel and that guardian angel was to keep us from all harm, then who needs God if you have an angel, yeah. you know? Thankfully, we have the spirit of God to minister to us in our weaknesses and to encourage us and to guide us and to help us in the midst of our grief. So again, the Holy Spirit who is God indwelling us is far better than even the concept of a guardian angel. So I don't know. I don't know if, if Lindy has a guardian angel and, and I don't know. But either way, the bottom line is clearly from life and from scripture, both, we can see there's nothing in scripture that says God protects us from all harm, guardian angel or not. Well, now I think about what does the scripture say? You think about Jesus. In Jesus' life, you know, Jesus made it clear even in the temptation that he had a legion of angels mm -hmm. at his disposal mm -hmm. that would come and, and rescue him should he need it. But it's interesting, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's praying to the Lord. The Bible says, and just kind of mentions in the passage, that an angel came to minister to him. Mm -hmm. Now, what did that angel do with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? Yeah, he, he served him, he ministered. He, did, he gave Jesus exactly what he needed. Mm -hmm in that moment, mm -hmm. but what he needed wasn't to escape the cross. Mm -hmm. No, he gave him the strength to endure. Mm -hmm. And aren't we glad? Yeah, absolutely. Why? Because that's God's will. But I mean, the biggest tragedy or the biggest crisis in the world is the crucifixion of the Son of the perfect, sinless Son of God. Mm -hmm. And God sent an angel, but in that moment, he didn't rescue Jesus. He actually, Jesus rescued us. Aren't we thankful for that? And so I think that's just important for us to remember when we go through difficulties is that God doesn't always promise to rescue us out of the valleys. Mm -hmm. He promises that he will be with us in the valleys. Mm -hmm. And he certainly is with us through the Holy Spirit. But I believe there are times where God sends his servants, his messengers, his angels, to walk with us will in the battle. Will he look like Michael Landon? <laughs> uh, far, far better, far greater, okay. far more powerful Good. than Michael Landon. But, you know, I, I think that's the other thing. Um, we can be thankful. For, I mean, when I think about angels, kind of in summary, I'm, you know, in God's perfect will and perfect creation, he created angels mm -hmm. because he said, this is good, right? this is right. And God uses angels and has used angels and continues to use angels in ways that, I certainly don't comprehend and don't know and don't see. Um, but I'm thankful that behind the angels is someone far better. That's right. Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. the one to whom the angels, you know, appeared and said, hey, don't worship me, worship Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's a great reminder. It's kind of maybe a great way to, to end our time together today. Mm -hmm just thanking God that in his wisdom and in his power and in his might, that he is the Lord of hosts, that he helps us in times of trouble, and that he has helped us most through the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lindy, thank you so much for joining me today um, on this important um, and, and biblical topic. Amen.